everyone. Welcome to Learning at Leventhar. This video is going to be about the different representations that are used for representing Boolean expressions. So you have basically two ways of representing a Boolean expression. One is the canonical form. The second is the standard form. The canonical form, you can represent the Boolean expression in two ways, either as sum of min terms or as product of max terms. And if it's in the standard form, you can represent it as sum of products or product of sums. Let's dive into each of these terms that we see here so that we get a clear understanding of what canonical form and standard form of representation are and how we can convert from one form to another. Let us begin with the canonical form of representation. But before we do that, we have to understand what min terms and max terms mean. So let me take up an example. Say I want to design a logic circuit. So the inputs are x and y and the output is f. Now x could either be 0 or 1, y could either be 0 or 1 and f also could either be 0 or 1. So these are binary systems that we're talking about. So the inputs could be how many combinations we can have. 2 to the power 2, that is the number of symbols and the number of inputs. So we can have four combinations from here, 2 to the power 2 is 4. So we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. Say I want to design the circuit in such a manner that the output will be high or 1 when the inputs put together is greater than or equal to 2. So this is 0, this is 1, this is 2 and 3 as per our decimal representation. So the output will not be high for 0 and 1 but it will become high for 2 and 3 because our condition is that if the inputs are greater than or equal to 2 then the output is going to be high. So we have represented this in this tabular column. This is known as the truth table. So from this, we are going to try and understand what is a min term and what are max terms. So I can represent this, these inputs, right? X and Y, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. In terms of X and Y, each of these inputs can be represented in terms of X and Y. How can I do that? If I consider the zeros as x complement and 1s as x. For the y column, if I considered the zeros to be y complement and the 1s as y. And then what would the min terms be? So we are going to write x dash y dash as the min term representation of 0, 0. x dash y because the 0 is x dash and the 1s are y because this is in the y column, then x, y dash and x, y. So these are the min term representations of my inputs. Now when I write x dash, y dash, I actually mean that there is an and operator in the middle. So x dash and y dash, x dash and y, x and y dash and x and y. So these are the combination of the inputs in terms of min terms. Now, when I talk about max terms, so here, when I have zeros, I'm going to consider it as x or y. And when I have ones, I'm going to consider them as x bar or y bar. And the operator that we are going to use here is the or operator. So I can represent the same inputs as max terms in this way. So zero here is x and y and the operator instead of the and operator we are going to use the or for 0 again x or y bar x bar or y x bar or y bar so these are the max term representations of the inputs that i have considered here so i hope right now we have understood how we can write the inputs in terms of min terms and max terms. 
let us now write the output of this truth table in terms of min terms and max terms. So we know that according to our scenario, the output should be high. It should go high only for the inputs where x and y put together are greater than or equal to 2. So only for the input combinations of 1, 0 and 1, 1, my output is going to be high. Which means I can say that f is going to hold good only for this and this these two combinations. Now, what are these two combinations in terms of min terms? We can say x, y dash and also if the input combination is x, y. So now, how do we put together these two uh, terms that we've got? So we can think of it in this manner. Either x, y dash input combination has occurred or x, y input combination has occurred. Only in these two scenarios, my output is going to be 1. Either x, y dash should hold good or x, y should hold good. So, I am combining these two terms with the word or. Therefore, I go for the or operator. So, now if we see, this expression is nothing but a sum of min terms. So, we have now got our first way of representing, that is the first canonical form, sum of min terms. We can now represent the same function in terms of max terms. But before I tell you about it, there is another way of writing this out. So this is uh, in decimal, this input is nothing but 0, this is 1, this is 2 and 3. So we know the decimal representation and the binary representation of these numbers. We can now therefore say that the xy dash input corresponds to the combination 1, 0, which is nothing but the number 2. And x, y input is a combination where x and y are 1, 1, which is nothing but 3. And this is a sum of two terms. So therefore, it is a summation of the second input and the third input, where f is the output function with x and y as the input terms. So if you ever see an expression that looks in this manner, it means that they are actually referring to this expression, which is the sum of min terms canonical form. Let's move on to representing the same function as max terms. So here, what we have is the truth table, the output, and I have also written out the max terms representation of each of these inputs. So here the output is supposed to be 1 only for the inputs where the decimal representation is going to be 2 or 3. right? So right now what we are going to do is we are going to represent f in terms of max terms. So these two combinations represent the truth state. Right now we are going to look at the combinations where it is false. So what do we obtain then? So we see that f can now be represented as the sum of min terms by looking at the truth values but as the product of max terms by looking at the false values. So the value of f is going to be false for the max terms x plus y and x plus y bar. So this now becomes our product of max terms. So right now we see that this max term x plus y represents capital M0, this is M1, M2 and M3. Since it's max terms, I'm going to write it as capital M. And for min terms, we can represent it as the small m, M0, M1, M2 and M3. So here we have to represent it with a pi which symbolizes the product. So it's the product of m0 and m1. So let's write out the min term and max term uh, representations side by side and uh, have a closer look at it. So for the min term representation, we were going to say that it is going to be the sum of the min terms uh, 
So this is going to be, if this is M0, M1, M2, and M3, it was the summation of M2 and M3, or like I said, 2 and 3. And in case of max terms, so if this is M0, M1, M2, and M3, I'm going to write it as the product of M0 and M1, or simply as 0 and 1. So there are only four combinations, that is from 0 to 3. So out of this, if we see that the min terms are 2 and 3 and the max terms are 0 and 1. So they are exclusive sets, as in they do not overlap at all. So whatever is not there in the min term will be in the max term. And whatever is not there in the max term is going to be in the min term. So therefore now, representing uh, the Boolean expression in the canonical form is going to be very simple. By just analyzing the truth table, we can represent it as the sum of min terms or product of max terms. And we can actually convert it within the canonical forms. The sum of min terms and the product of man max terms conversion can happen in a very simple manner by just looking at the min terms that are added. So if there are four inputs from 0 to 3, and if 2 and 3 belong to min term, it means 0 and 1, which is left out from 0 to 3, that is going to belong to the max terms. So conversions within the canonical form can be done in this manner. So simply to put it, in the min terms representation, if it is xy dash plus xy, so this is my f. Now we know that this is nothing but 2 and this is nothing but 3. So by looking at this, we can write it in terms of max terms as the max term representation of 0, which is x dash plus y dash with the product and 1, which is x plus y dash. So this is the conversions within the canonical form. Let's move on to standard form. Now, again, let's take the example where I have two inputs and one output. So here I can represent the inputs in this manner. And let's take the same example where the output is going to be 1 for numbers greater than equal to 2. So we saw that f was equal to xy dash plus xy. If you look at each of these uh, terms, every term is having all the literals or all the inputs involved. So the first term is having both x and y. The second term is also having both x and y. So this was the sum of min terms representation. If I want to bring it down to standard form, I can simplify this. So let's take x common. I will get y plus y dash y plus y dash is nothing but 1. Therefore, this boils down to nothing but x. So I can simply represent this entire uh, problem with a single literal, that is x. So this therefore precisely means that a single term in the expression need not contain all the inputs in it. It is okay if some of the inputs are missing in a particular term because it means that it's just in a simplified manner. So that way of representation is called the standard form. So let's take up another uh, example and I'll leave it to you to identify and tell me whether it is in the canonical representation or standard form representation. So say there's an expression which says f is equal to xy plus yz plus xz. So here we can clearly see that there are three literals that are involved in the expression. One is x, the other is y, and the third one is z. So this means that there are three inputs involved over here. So if that is the case, then let's observe each term. This is the first term, this is the second term, and this one is the third term. But if you look at every term, 
It does not have all the literals involved in it. The first term has only x, y. Z is missing. The second has y, z. X is missing. X, z, y is missing in the third term. So this is not a canonical form. So this is not a min term representation. It is not a sum of min terms because each of these terms are not min terms. In this case, this is therefore a standard form of representation and it is called as sum of products because every term is actually a product of two literals. In the same way, we can actually represent this expression in the form of product of sums. So product of sums would look something like, I'll just give you an example. It could be x plus y, x dash plus z and x plus y dash. So here again, randomly, there are three terms in this expression and they are going to be products of each other. This is the first term. This is the second term. This is the third term. They are products of each other. Each term is a sum. So this is going to be a product of sums. But if you observe every term, it is not a max term. Because if it were to be a max term, all the inputs that are involved in this expression should be available in every term. So here there are x, y, z, three inputs, but the first term only has x and y. Z is missing. So is the case with the other terms too. So this again is a standard form of representation and it is called as product of sum. So you can write it in the short way as SOPs and POS which is nothing but the standard form of representation where every term is not going to be a min term or a max term. On the other hand, if every term is going to be a min term or a max term, then it becomes the canonical form and then it is not called as the standard form. It's called the sum of min terms or product of max terms. That's all with today's video. So I hope uh, you've understood the difference between the SOP and the sum of min terms and POS and product of max terms. Thanks for watching. Please do subscribe to this channel.